This episode of Around the Oval is brought to you by Todd Pennington with Revolution Mortgage. Hey everyone, Alex Gleitman here with a somewhat special edition of Around the Oval brought to you by Todd Pennington with Revolution Mortgage. Uh, we just, you know, I was, I was literally recording, about to record with our guest who was going to talk Maryland, uh, Jeff Ehrman from Inside MD Sports at 24-7 Sports, but uh, we were, he, he literally got an email as we were about to record saying that the game was canceled. I ran to Twitter. I saw that that was confirmed. And so now I bring on the great Kirk Barton with us uh, to break down exactly what this means for Ohio State, uh, the college football playoff picture, the Big Ten picture. Kirk, thanks for joining us on such short notice. Absolutely, brother. And I'm with the great Alex Gleitman, my, my content monster, my advertising monster, one of our all-stars. So I'm going to return that compliment. I don't smoke a locker room cigar as good as you do, though. So <laughs> we'll, we'll have to work on that part of my game. Yeah, I just gotta build, all I got to do is build us a locker room, and then you can smoke all the cigars you want with the content you're putting out. So Sounds it's good. good it's a winter project for my basement. But um, I love it. Yeah, like, uh, you know, we were in a group text. Obviously, I think we're all bummed out that the Buckeyes will not be playing this weekend. Uh, the Big Ten has zero room for error in this COVID world because of the fiasco that happened before the year. But tell us, what's your, uh, what's your reaction to the news that, that Maryland had an outbreak and Ohio State won't be playing football this weekend? Yeah, it's, it's not surprising, but it, it is a little surprising just because Maryland is coming off such a, a nice win versus Penn State. Um, but this is like, you know, there's never been a time in the history of college football that requires more discipline than right now. I mean, these kids are locked in their dorms. Like, our Ohio State kids don't do anything. The guys I talk to, man, they're in their little bubble, playing a lot of Call of Duty Warzone. You know, if I was Ryan Day, I'd go out and buy them all the new Xboxes and say, guys, here you go. Here's your present for sitting in the dorm and not going out on the town, not seeing your family. And, you know, it just takes a team like Maryland that's not as disciplined in that regard to, to cause a game cancellation. And I, I was worried about teams who maybe don't care as much anymore, like LSU, for instance. You know, they lose to Mississippi State. They're, they've been in the skids. They're going to play Bama. It's Halloween last weekend, and the players all go out. You know, and it's like – and that's just like a, like a, a melting pot for something like COVID to fester and take over a locker room because, you know, these guys, they all want to go out. They all see pretty girls and, you know, little outfits and whatever. And, you know, it takes a lot of discipline to stay in on Halloween weekend. And, you know, LSU didn't have it. Maryland didn't have it. So it's 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 tough on these kids. But, you know, the eye for Ohio State, they won a national championship. So the eye's on the prize. And they've been, they've been really good at controlling the outbreaks. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, as a former player, you have a unique perspective in – how something like this impacts you, you know, and, and the team. I mean, obviously this is an unprecedented event, mm -hmm. but if you were on the team and you were playing and you got this news after preparing all week for Maryland and coming off a, a game in which, you know, the team didn't put forth its best performance, I'm sure you were itching to get back out there and kind of lay yeah. the smackdown on, on an inferior team. How, how do you think this, the players are reacting to this? You know, I think that there's going to be a lot of guys that are upset, um, I'm sure guys will be depressed, like guys that didn't play as well last week that wanted to get back out there. And, you know, the, the biggest thing about when you play poorly, you know, if you're an individual or as a unit, is that you can't wait to get back out there and, and kind of get that funk off of you. You know, you want to go, you know, show that you can play lights out. Um, you know, I know our offensive line played okay, but, they, you know, there's a lot of areas where they wanted to play better. I think our back end, you know, Sean Wade, like some of these guys, like they can't wait to get back out and get that session. Plus, I think that they were excited because Maryland's a good team. I mean, they threw it all over, you know, Penn State. They've got a great quarterback. Um, so, you know, there's a little bit more intensity when you got to focus. You got to be on the road. You got to play a great passing team. Um, it's not quite the same as Rutgers, um, you know, just because it's just, it's a talent jump and they look like they're kind of on the come. So, you know, I don't worry about them being motivated for Indiana, but, you know, the challenge of going on the road and playing a good team in their home place. I mean, the last time we were there was like a one-point game. It goes to the Haskins game where you know, they, we gave up like 7,000 yards rushing on the same play to Booker McFarland's kid. So, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I would be angry, depressed. I mean, if, if you're banged up, there's a little bit of relief because you kind of you get like a bye week to heal. But these guys want to play, man. It's such a short season and – you know, I just, I, it sucks for the whole region because we all look forward to Saturdays watching the Buckeyes and it's, it sucks we're not going to have that this week. 
Yeah, for sure. And, you know, I, I, I'm trying to find silver linings in this. I It, it, it stinks. Um, Ohio State will now be playing seven maximum regular season games um, and then hopefully a Big Ten championship. But when you look at silver linings, I think the good thing is next week, not this coming week, but obviously next week, there's a big game at home against Indiana. I mean, that yep. right now that game is for the Big Ten East and a chance to go yeah. – to Indianapolis, it gives you some extra time to prepare for that game. You're not focused the next few days on Maryland and then breaking down that film and whatever. You can immediately turn your attention to Indiana. Um, you know, the players could get some extra, some practice reps and things like that. And you can work on some extra things and maybe give them, you know, a couple of days off to heal off some, some soreness and, and injuries. From, from your perspective, I mean, obviously that is a silver lining, but is it better looking at the Indiana game solely? Is it better for these guys to be able to do that? Or is it better for them to get out there and get game reps? God, that is a great, great question, Alex. That's so tough. Um, you know, honestly, if you put a gun to my head and said, hey, if you could, if you had to schedule a buy, if you had to, like before the best team you're going to play is when I probably put it, you know, plus there's not, you know, this is, and it's not hard to play, you know, eight straight weeks. Cause like my senior year, we played 12 straight weeks. We had no buy the entire season. So, but you know, if you got to build in a buy, you know, I mean, you shave off a road game. So you don't have to travel. You get a head start on Indiana. I mean, if, if, if we're trying to spin this and be just, you know, like Ned Flanders positive, then I mean, this is the time to do it. You know, it's, it sucks. I mean, you know, we want to play, but, you know, no amount of negativity is going to make this game get rescheduled. So it's it's just one of those things where I think you just got to take, you know, I, I, if I was the head coach, I would scrimmage the young guys. You know, I'd probably ramp up today's practice and scrimmage a little bit with the older guys. But the young guys would get a real heavy scrimmage probably today just to, you know, because, I mean, they got to get some some reps, man. And if they're not traveling, it's like you got to – they're not getting in the games. You got to scrimmage them a little bit. And – uh just move on to Indiana. I mean, all you can do is like, you know, when you get the lemons, man, you got to make lemonade out of it. You got to take advantage of your rest. You got to get, you know, you get three extra days to prepare now, which is great. And, um, you know, it stinks. But I mean, you know, there's nothing you can do about it except use the extra time to your advantage towards Indiana. Yeah, I think I, I agree wholeheartedly. I think it's, it's kind of a blessing in disguise to some extent. Number one, I think Maryland was going to run up a bunch of points on Ohio State's defense. Yep. Um, and I don't know if that would have been such a great thing going into the Indiana game. Uh, and, and, you know, it gives these guys another chance to – or more chance to study, study Indiana on film, practice specifically against some of their schemes and things like that. So it's going to be interesting to see how Ryan Day handles it. Um, but I think it's, it's going to be a benefit um, for what I would consider Ohio State's toughest game, at least until the – I guess the Michigan game, maybe the Big Ten championship game. So – uh, we'll see how, how things shake out over the next couple of days. But the question I'm getting a lot, it looks like on Twitter and text messages is how does this impact Ohio state as far as their chances for the college football playoff? Um, is there concern that another game, two games get canceled? They can't even play for the big 10 championship. I think you need six games played. So if two more games got canceled, they couldn't even play for the big 10 championship. I guess Kirk in your mind, does one game canceled affect Ohio State's college football playoff chances? And, you know, I guess at what point would their college football playoff chances be in danger? How many, how many games would Ohio State have to play or not, you know, or, or not play uh, for that yeah. to be a concern for you? I think they got to get six, six, they got to go six and out. They got to get six games in. Um, you know, we got to pray that these other teams don't have outbreaks. Cause I mean, I think our guys are doing a great job with it. Um, you haven't, heard of other than Justin Hogarth's false positive you haven't heard of any kids that have missed time you know I'm, I know they've had some positives but they've kept it under control you know they've done a great job with it and you know I frankly you know they got to get six games in but this was a game you know last time we were out there we won by like a point you know and they've got a good offense and our defense isn't playing that great so you know if you want to be positive with it the fact that we're not playing is a, a chance it's one less chance where you could lose you know and screw it all up and this is coming from a guy that was and my senior year, were, you know, we're number one in the country. We lost to an unranked Illinois team at home. So it's like sometimes on a given Saturday, you never know what could go wrong because we were, you know, a quarterback completing a pass away from losing to these guys last time we played them. And, you know, they've got athletes. So if you can't, you know, if, if you don't play, you can't lose. You know, so it's like if we get if we get 6-0, there's no way we're going to get kept out of the playoffs. So we just got to win every game we have. 
you know, we're not the only team dealing with this. Bama's dealing with this. You know, Clemson's had an outbreak. I mean, it's just one of those things where, you know, it's it's uncharted territory, but, you know, it'll test the resolve of your team and the culture of your team when you get thrown a curveball like this, you know, because guys are excited to play and, you know, guys want to go out and put good film out. But if, you know, if, if you're not playing, you know, it's not their fault. They can't be penalized. Like, it's not like they had the outbreak. So it – um. It was interesting because I was really excited about this game. I was excited to see if the defense could could figure some things out and see the O line play it better. And it sinks that it happened, but you gotta you gotta take the positives of it if you know if you can. It's the only thing you can do. Yeah, and, and then the last question I'm gonna ask you. It's interesting. You know, we mentioned the SEC, ton of outbreak this weekend. Um, some games being canceled, postponed, whatever. I mean, the SEC did build their schedule out to be able to sustain some blows like this, but I don't think based on what's especially what's going on in that part of the country with the numbers and whatnot, that, that this is just a one-week issue for them either. So should the college football playoff committee or who's ever making that decision reconsider when this is being held? Like, should they be pushing this back to allow for, you know, some sort of contingency here? I think this should bump it back two weeks just to give you a little bit more space, you know, maybe a, uh, and get with the conferences and have them bump, bump back championship, you know, whatever, Saturday, Sunday, whatever, like get, have them bump that back uh, just so that you can have a slot to potentially make up a game or two, just because then I think that's the most fair thing. But the problem is, again, like I don't worry about like the kids at Ohio State. I worry about the teams that are out of everything, you know, like the teams that you know, like LSU, they've got kids that are like declaring for the draft already. And they got kids that are opting out. They got kids, you know, and, and it's not, to me, it's not a coincidence all these things are coming two weeks after Halloween. You know, it's like, you know, I mean, Halloween on Saturday night was like a death knell to the season because these kids are, they're kids. I mean, they want to go out, you know, they want to, you know, go see girls, whatever. And, you know, that happens at bars. It happens at parties. And, you know, it's like a big Petri dish, you know, and, and these kids, magically, they all get infected. Like, I don't think it's too hard to connect the dots. I mean, you don't have to be like a neurosurgeon to figure out that, College kids, Halloween. I mean, it's like one of the best nights of the whole year. I mean, but yeah, you know, I, I just think that, and, and the kids that have nothing to lose, like, I don't worry about our kids going out because our kids are trying to win a national championship. It's the only reason a lot of these kids came back. So they say, screw it. I don't have to go out this year for Halloween. I go out next year or whatever. But kids that don't have anything to lose, like LSU and like the bad teams in the Big Ten, you know, they don't care. I mean, they're not, they're not in it to win the natty. They're just trying to get through the season. And if a game gets canceled, they're just like, eh. Oh well, who cares? It's one last time they can get beat. So, you know, I, I just think that it's just it's fascinating the range of, I guess, kids' perspectives on this whole situation. Because there's some kids who are probably happy the game got canceled. They're just like, oh great, I don't have to go play a game. Awesome, I can play the new the new X. I got the new Xbox for a game all weekend. You know, it's I think it's kind of like a, a scale of emotions that's it's really fascinating to look at. Yeah, well, it's definitely going to be interesting to see how the rest of the college football season goes. I'm trying to stay optimistic, hoping everyone uh, does their part. But as you said, it seems like that's not really going to be the case like it is inside the Woody. I'm sure it's inside Alabama's facility and a number of other places where you have a legitimate shot to win a national championship. But, um, you know, next time, next time we're talking Buckeyes football, the focus will be on Indiana. Excited to do that. I think it's going to be a – a pretty good game. I, I, I'm, I'm optimistic about Ohio State's chances, but I'll have to look at things a little bit closer here over the next week before we uh, put forth a real prediction. But Kirk, thanks for joining the show. Um, always a pleasure to, to chat football with you. And uh, everyone, definitely go check out Todd Pennington with Revolution Mortgage. You're looking for a mortgage, refinance your home. Hit up revolutionmortgage.com slash T Pennington. He's great. Plenty of board members have used him, and he's been a great partner to the group. And, and, and I've used him. He's awesome. He's financing the house I'm building right now. So shout out, Todd. You're awesome, dude. Appreciate you. All right, everyone. So, Thanks. We'll see you next week. All right. Cool.